Arguments that lead to criticism, scorn, and emotional estrangement can ruin marriages. A key to improving the situation is lowering the emotional temperature of our disputes. There's an important term in family therapy. We talk about vapor lock, that moment where you don't have enough oxygen in the room to be your best self. We are in a struggle with our own anger, with our own energy. When we are angry, we are blinded. One of the things we need to develop is an understanding of when your partner has entered into a vapor lock or yourself. Because you'll do more damage than any good. You will not make your point. Even when somebody traumatizes, not, oh, she's not going to listen to you. When we reach that point where we're no longer able to think, to take on a new idea, to process our thinking or behavior or emotions, it's actually best for us to stop. Experts tell us that fights between spouses affect men and women differently. It usually takes men longer to cool down. Many modern strategies that help couples de-escalate have remarkable parallels in the Islamic tradition. When couples are fighting um, and they get quite emotional, it's important to recognize that their, their emotions has a physical component to it. This can look like you know your heart's racing, your head's pounding. You have some physical experiences within you. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, showed us how to de-escalate a situation. Firstly, by telling us that if you're upset, take the means of settling that anger before you speak or act. And what we'd like to do is we'd like you to spend all of your energy staying on this side of vapor lock so that you're calm, you're able to think. Control the emotion. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it starts getting out of control and you're standing up, sit down. If you're sitting down, lay down. It's important to recognize what happens to you at the time and to do something to soothe yourself. He taught us that anger is like fire and fire is controlled by water. One of the things to do is to drink water. If that doesn't work and you feel the, the heat boiling up in you, make wudu. Because the process of wudu is cleansing. It's both physical and spiritual cleansing. You make wudu. Uh, you can pray. Prayer is important. That's why he says tadakkaru, dhikr can come in a form of prayer. Within your marriage, there should be no pride. You can't say, I'm too proud to apologize to my husband or to my wife. It could be something where, you know, one of you in a very supportive way tells the other, look, I think, you know, it seems like you're getting increasingly upset. I'm getting increasingly upset. Do you want to take a 10-minute breather here? Research says 20 minutes. For some people, it's 20 minutes. For some people, it's two hours. For some people, it's a whole day. So you need to understand how that person works. How long does it take them to cool down? If it's not a life to death situation, we don't need to make any decision, we can postpone this. By that time, the next time round comes a conversation, those sentiments and feelings have pretty much subsided. If you have a, a difficult argument, that you might want to step away from it for 24 hours to allow the, you know, the emotions and the heated feelings to settle down. But don't let it go for more than 72 hours. Sometimes when you're in the middle of conflict and you're talking about things, you're getting increasingly upset, you're, you start to take more shallow breaths. So when you recognize that's happening at the moment, you can start to notice your breath and take some deeper breaths. And that, what happens there is you're actually calming yourself down physically. This helps one disengage momentarily from the situation. So it avoids you doing something hasty and it avoids you from having that angry, immediate, unconsidered reaction. During moments of calm, couples can reflect on how they argue and what kinds of techniques can help them avoid arguments from going too far. It could be a smile, it could be a touch, it could be a joke, or it could be a gesture that the person finds funny, but you have to you have to customize it to your spouse. Sometimes it's trial and error. You might try something that doesn't work, but if you find that something works, then keep doing it. We actually make people tape themselves. Tape themselves and play a scenario of anger. And re, uh, reenact an incident. And I, I'll tape it and say, here, don't worry, watch this. And they watch and say, oh my God, I look like a fool. I look bad. A messy situation. Consult before you have the full response. At 
Hudaybiyah, for example, the same thing. The Prophet ﷺ, when he told the companions to get out of their ihram, they found it very difficult. So instead of forcing the situation, he stepped away, went, in, went into his tent, he consulted his wife, Umm Salama, and she gave him advice. Have a conversation about, like, how is it that we end up as getting escalated? Do we yell very loud? Do we start yelling over each other? Is that what's happening? When you recognize your pattern, you guys can talk about, okay, what exactly is it that you can uh, do when you start to get escalated? Like, come up with a game plan. Behavior that helps calm the person down is important. And it's important to be aware of it during the calm moments so that when the person is angry, they know exactly what to do. I know exactly that I need to take a walk for me to calm down. One person has to take that leadership. It could be anyone who is trying to diffuse it. So these are skills that one learns as time goes by when you apply them.